Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC, and it's time for another EDC Weekly. And as I mentioned a few weeks ago, this episode is all about fixed blades. I asked you guys to submit your favorite fixed blades because I've been on a fixed blade kick lately. And uh, wow, wow, there were a ton of submissions. And apparently fixed blades for EDC are far more popular than I gave them credit for. Uh, yeah, it was really tough to pick just five submissions this week, like really tough. So we're gonna have to revisit this one pretty soon. But that out of the way, this is the EDC Weekly Fixed Blade Edition. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. Before we go any further, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Big Idea Design. You guys are probably familiar with them for their titanium pocket tools that I love so much. Things that I carry every single day, like the TPT slide. They also have the EDS or Everyday Screwdriver, the Bitbar, and then their most recent pocket tool is the Bitbar Inline Max, which is a screwdriver that uses Leatherman bits in a few different configurations. It's really, really cool. But Big Idea Design also specializes in everyday pens, and they come in either a really small compact form factor like the Mini Click EDC and the Mini Dual Click EDC. But on the other end of the spectrum, they have pens that will take basically any refill you can throw at them, like the Pocket Pro, the Click EDC, the Bolt Action, and many others in their full-size range. They take so many refills, and that means that you can choose the pen you want and then put the refill you want inside their pen. But Big Edit Design is always working on something new, like literally always. And what they've come out with now is something that I've personally never seen before, and it's awesome. It is a bolt action mechanical pencil. And it works basically exactly how you think it would. There is a bolt that you actuate to reveal the tip and then to advance the lead, you just click that bolt even further, the lead comes out. And then to protect the tip and the lead, you just retract the bolt and it's protected. You're not gonna have to worry about breaking the lead off while it's in your pocket. It's a very, very clever design. Every one of Big Eddie Design's bolt action mechanical pencils also ships with three different Schmidt mechanical pencil system refills. So you can take either 0 0.5, 0 0.7 or 0.9 millimeter lead and they all ship with a block eraser. Also, these mechanical pencils come in all the materials that you're used to from Big Idea Design. There's titanium that comes in a stonewashed raw or DLC, as well as copper, brass, and zirconium. And if you wanna spice things up, they also ship with a Timascus bolt that you can put on yourself. And if you wanna spice it up even further, you can purchase an add-on Timascus clip to match the bolt. The bolt action mechanical pencil from Big Idea Design is live on Kickstarter right now. There are 35 days left on the campaign, so if you wanna check it out and back it yourself, hit the link in the description down below. And don't forget to check out all the other stuff that Big Idea Design has to offer. You can check out their website using another link in the description down below. And on their website, you can use the coupon code CARRYON for 10% off your purchase at checkout. And if you do, you'll help support what we're doing here. And once again, I wanna thank Big Idea Design for sponsoring this video. So the deeper I've gotten into this world of fixed blades, the, the more I've realized I know nothing. Uh, there are just so many makers out there I've never heard of. And I think that's largely due in part because fixed blades are a simpler concept than a folding knife. They're easier to make inherently. And that means that there are gonna be a lot more indie makers that are just turning out fixed blades in their garages, which to me is awesome. I love that. I really truly love that. And uh, I just think that that makes this whole facet of EDC or just the knife world in general really cool. These indie makers are doing some really cool stuff and they're making knives that are, you know, really great and for a great price. So it's hard to argue against fixed blades, especially if you can get the sheath situation right for how you prefer to carry, which has always been the hang up for me. Uh, but all that aside, I just wanted to say, Fixed blades are far more popular than I ever would have imagined for EDC. And maybe you just dug your fixed blade out and threw it in the photo to get in, maybe. There's no way for me to know. But I'd like to pretend or believe that all of those people who have submitted to this are actually carrying fixed blades every day. That's awesome. I hope. With that out of the way, let's get to these submissions. The very first one this week comes from Phil or at the Ruthless Project over on Instagram. That name sounds familiar, I feel like that we have featured Phil before, we probably have, but I I don't know anymore. Let's talk about what's in this photo. The very first thing that jumped out at me was the knife. Very tiny, little great fixed blade with a cool sheath. Uh, that is a Nuge, Nuge? N-U-G-E, Ruthless Edition Wicket 
It's a small Nitro V steel fixed blade with a textured OD green micarta handle. It's got copper for the plugs. And then the sheath is a green Topo Kydex sheath. Very, very cool combo. Uh, underneath the knife is a Failsafe Goods mini organizer in that he uses it as a wallet, but he also keeps a Lynch Northwest all access pass as well as a SOG power pint. And that's everything. Bill says, this is some of the gear that rotates around my carry. The wallet and multi-tool change fairly regularly, but the all access pass is always in my pocket no matter where I go. It has to be my most used EDC tool as I use it for anything and everything. The fixed blade is very special to me because it's my edition of the Wicket from Knives by Nuge. The knife design was his, but how it's distressed was all me. It's a blasted Nitro V steel with textured OD green scales and flared copper tubes. It is a small but mighty knife that's perfect for everyday carry. It comes with a Topo Kydex sheath, which you can put on a lanyard and wear as a neck knife or add an ulti clip and put it in your pocket. These were a limited run, but more will be available pretty soon. It's a very, very cool, tiny knife. I've been really digging small fixed blades, like really small fixed blades. In fact, the knife I've been using today is the GMF-1 from Giant Mouse Knives. Just a fantastic knife. It's small, but it gets the job done always. I love this knife. I love small fixed blades. That's just all there is to it. Anyway, thank you for sharing, Phil. That is a really cool small knife. You now have a second entry into the April giveaway. And oh yeah, we're gonna choose a winner at the end of the video. The next submission comes from Alberto or mcmxcix.blades over on Instagram. Uh, this one jumped out for a couple of reasons, but let's just get into what's in the photo. The bigger knife that you see, the folding knife to the right of the photo is the Null Knives Raiden PVD TI handles and M390 blade. There's also Jacob Creates Chickadee Water Moccasin in M4. That is the smaller fixed blade you see in the center of the photo. He also has a Best M EDC Topo TPT Slide V2. He has a Tactile Turn Bolt Action Aurora Edition. There's a uh, Pocket Tool Pouch by Hitch and Timber. And then finally at the bottom of the photo on his wrist is the Seiko Kotura Kinetic. Alberto says, I'm looking for good ways to add leather lanyards and beads to a few of my blades and some fixed blade recommendations. I currently have a Benchmade Bushcrafter and this Chickadee. Uh, well, you can't add a leather lanyard to that chickadee because there's no lanyard hole. But all I do, this this cordage right here, I get from Hobby Lobby. It's Latigo. I mean, you just buy it by the roll. It's like $18 a spool. Uh, I always buy it when it's on sale for like $10. Uh, and that will tie lanyards for, in fact, here, I'll show you. It comes on a spool like this. This says $18.99. That's all the details you need right there. But uh, this will cut, you know, 70, 80 lanyards. So yeah, you only need one. Alberto also says, a lot of these items are newer in my carry journey. The Hitchin Timber pouch lives in a Ranger bag in my car. Usually it carries a SOG PowerPoint, refined EP1 pin, a little notebook, and a Carry Commission X Vero Pry, which I usually don't keep in my pockets. The Chickadee has been a fun little fixie to carry on occasion, and I'm excited to add the Carry Commission Scout straps from Friday's drop. Well, very cool. Glad you picked some of those up. I actually really like those Scout straps. I just... I just can't get used to scout carry. It just doesn't feel right for me. Um, and I don't like it on my hip because then the handle extends out. So you need to either carry it on the back. I, I can't really get comfortable with scout carry or even just horizontal carry at all. But I, I love those scout straps. So I want to carry scout more, but I just don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just a wild camping thing for me. I'm interested to know more about this Null Knives. I, I've never heard of Null Knives. Like I've heard of it, I've never seen a null knife, I guess is a better way to put that. Um, I'm a sucker for a harpoon blade like that too. That's cool. I know we're here talking about fixed blades, but that Raiden seems like a pretty cool little knife. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a white labeled knife probably made by Wii or Rayot, probably Rayot, titanium frame lock on bearings, the usual, but that looks really nice. It reminds me of the, uh, I think it was by Wii, but it was the Oaks Orca. That was a pretty cool little knife with a harpoon like that, but it was a uh, carbon fiber handle. But yeah, anyway, very cool. Thank you for sharing. You now have a second entry into the giveaway. All right, the next submission comes from Jonathan Shaw or Triple Stripe Knives over on Instagram. As the handle might suggest, he's a knife maker. Uh, he's also 17 years old and his work is really, really nice for a 17 year old. It's just nice in general, but it's just impressive also that he's 17 years old. Um, I took some time while planning this out and watched a couple of his videos on YouTube. Uh, it's just very interesting to watch the process and, you know, know that somebody who is far younger than me is doing some really cool stuff and it, Jonathan's got a bright future ahead of him. So 
Let's talk about what we see in this photo. First up, we're gonna go left to right. The knife that you see on the far left is the Triple Stripe Knives Link. That is the folder. It's in Magna Cut with titanium handles, OD micarta as well. There's Jungle Wear CF accents on it as well. The fixed blade next to that is the Triple Stripe Knives Mutt, and it's also a Magna Cut. It's got natural micarta handles and then an orange glow bead on the lanyard. He has a little Mountain Leatherworks organizer, and inside that there's a bit driver, which he says is handmade, Triple Stripe Knives Slim Pry Tool, brass mechanical pencil, copper bolt action pin. Both of those are handmade. Uh, Knipex 5 inch Cobra pliers a jungle wear CF coin. And then finally, he has an Ole Arkfeld in titanium to the far right. Jonathan says, there's nothing really that I'm looking to add to this specific carry, though I am looking for a fancy looking watch in the 200-ish range, as I'm not really a watch guy and I don't know where to start. Seiko, Citizen, Orient, you can't go wrong with any of them. Find which one you like, buy it, and then go from there. Uh, Seiko 5 Sport is probably gonna be the best recommendation at that 200 price point range. You, you can't really go with anything micro brand beyond that. If you were more interested in that, you're looking at like upper 300s to 500, 600, $700. 200 range, I would say stick to Seiko, Citizen, and then Orient in that order. He also says, as you might be able to tell, I'm a knife maker, and so I make a lot of the gear that I carry. Both knives are fairly new additions as I made them recently, but they've each seen a lot of pocket time. The fixed blade gets carried horizontally at 12 o'clock, and then the folder is in my right pocket with the organizer. And finally, the light is in my right back pocket. All of the gear in the organizer sees a lot of use. Because I'm still in high school, pen and pencil both see a lot of time writing notes in class, and the bit driver is there because I'm always taking knives apart when I'm making folders. The Knipex and Pry Tool were both added to the carry after watching the channel, and each has proven to be extremely useful, especially the Knipex. I'm glad that you found those useful. I, I think this is really cool. And you always tend to work in some natural canvas micarta. I'm a sucker for canvas micarta, uh, especially natural, but it's got really nice tones to it. Yeah, so keep it up, man. Great work really nice knives and you know have a second entry into the giveaway the fourth submission this week comes from aiden wade or poor underscore man underscore edc over on instagram and uh yeah let's just get into it this is a classic the knife that you see here it is the se azula about as good as bang for buck as you can get in any fixed blades it's going to come from se because they're affordable they have a ridiculous and just ludicrous warranty se azula uh, I had to include at least one SE in this video because I got I got dragged for not putting an SE in my top five EDC fixed blades. I just don't EDC their fixed blades. I, I like SE knives, but I, you know, the pocket sheath situation. I carry what I have a sheath for. <laughs> anyway, uh, second, the folder that you see, everything else is kind of obscured a little bit, but the folder that's underneath everything is the Spyderco smock. He also has a Lynch Northwest clip on that. There is a big idea design TPT slide with a copper compression ring as a bead. He has in this pouch, I'm guessing a Leatherman Wave Plus as well as a Leatherman Ratchet Driver, which you can see poking out right beside the smock. He has a Zippo in copper. And then the flashlight is a Lumen Top EDC 18. There's a Petrified Fish Kara Tool. And then we have a Goose Pin, which he says is from Comic-Con. And all of that is kept in a Viperade pouch. Not in the picture is a leather notebook cover, handmade leather wallet from a local vendor, and a Keysmart Rugged with a copper quick disconnect. Aiden says, I'd love to have a good leather sheath that would let me horizontally bear belt carry the SC Azula without adding too much extra bulk. You're in luck. I don't know of any sheaths uh, in leather that would let you horizontal belt carry, like a scout carry. But because the SE Azula is such a popular knife, I am sure that you can find a sheath for the Azula. I hesitate to recommend Etsy as a place to go now because it's just turned into like a giant cesspool of a bunch of Chinese knockoffs of legitimate gear. But I'm sure that somebody in the comments down below or someone on Instagram could point you in the direction of somebody who makes a scout carry option leather sheath for an SE Azula. Like that can't be that hard to find. It surely can't. The Azula is a very, very popular knife. Anyway, they also said the Azula is a knife built to be used and abused, but when I say mine has seen some shit, I mean it probably more literally than most. Working in restoration, I often find myself needing to, to materials contaminated with mold, sewage, soot, etc. This blade can and has handled it all from carpet to fiberglass to copper wiring and all sorts of fun biohazardous environments. 
It's my go-to hard user more than any other tool in my kit. It's really cool to see and hear, and I'm sure Essie loves to hear it and see it as well. Um, anytime you see them at an event like Georgia Bushcraft, Blade Show, they have a table of just completely thrashed knives. They have displays for thrash knives just to show off how good their warranty is. They want people to use their stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact that they love hearing that people are just beating their knives to crap. So, very cool stuff. Thank you for sharing. You now have a second entry into the giveaway. The fifth and final submission this week comes from Wyatt Cutchin. Cutchin? Or you can find him on Instagram at bilgewaterblades. And uh, yeah, again, another knife maker from the community. Let's just dig into it. What you see in the photo here, there is a Carhartt hat with a Texas logo on it. He has some Ray-Bans, a tactile turn, bolt action pin, and titanium. And then we have a wallet that comes from Chat Valley EDC with a custom pry bottle opener inside of it. Not shown, of course. Underneath all that is an awesome Hanks handkerchief. And then sitting on top of it, is a Bilgewater Blades Jackrabbit. That is a fixed blade with bog oak and fordite spacer made by Wyatt with a leather pocket sheath. I also know that Wyatt has started carrying and making exclusively pocket sheets for his knives now because of the channel. He reached out on Instagram to let me know that after the fixed blade video. Anyway, I implore you to go check out Bilgewater Blades over on Instagram. He does amazing work. I love how rustic these look uh, with the forge marks and it, like they're just really gnarly looking knives. They do look a little like bulky, chunky in the handle, which sometimes is a good thing. Uh, me personally for EDC, I like something a little slimmer like this that can just kind of disappear in the pocket. But um, yeah, just phenomenal work. These things look great. The handles are all really unique and just gnarly. So really, really cool stuff from Wyatt. He also says, I'd like to snag a high-end flashlight at some point, just not sure which one quite yet. Well, I have a couple of recommendations. Really love my CWF. That's what's in my pocket now. We, we sell this one at Carry Commission. Um, high-end, but still AAA size, that's why I like it because it's AAA sized. I don't really like carrying bigger pocket flashlights. The only size larger than this that I'm gonna go is AA, which if you're going AA, there's one option, in my opinion, and that's Okluma. Uh, Oklumas are awesome as well, and I know a lot of people don't get why you would pay four or $500 for a simple flashlight, like this one right here, or an Okluma, when you know they don't really do much more than a streamlight that's far far cheaper but somebody who is a maker probably already understands that um it's simplicity it works the way you want it to and it's just damn reliable and handmade or at least small batch made and i can support that the only other company i'd say that i have any experience with is laulima those those flashlights are great as well so uh, I'm sure other people out there are, f I know, <laughs> I'm not sure, I know that there are people out there who are far more into flashlights than I am, who could probably direct you better. I would recommend joining the Discord. Uh, there is a sub community within the Discord that are just obsessed with flashlights. So that's that's my suggestion, is go ask them. Wyatt also says, hey, I love the channel. I make and sell knives in my free time, and the knife in the photo is one of my most popular models, the Jackrabbit. I made it around two years ago, and it hasn't left my pocket. I have a strong distaste for Kydex and things on my belt. So all of my custom work comes with leather pocket sheaths unless you pick up a large blade, of course. I actually got into the tactile turn because of your channel. I'm in the US Navy as a helicopter electrician and in turn write a ton of stuff down. I'm upset it took me so long to pick up one because it is easily the nicest pin I've owned and used. The wallet is dual function because it has a dedicated sheath for my pry tool slash bottle opener I made and its small form is ideal for me. Keep killing it, Wyatt Kutchin. Well, Thank you, and you as well. Uh, I hate, I didn't know about your knives before I did. They, they look really great, and uh, it's probably something I'm gonna be adding to my collection, especially knowing now that you only sell them with uh, pocket sheets. That's awesome. I think more knife makers need to be making really nice pocket sheets that go along with their knives, or at least working with leather makers to make that an option that's available to customers, because I would buy more fixed blades if I had better sheath options. So there, there you have it. Okay, so now it's time to choose a winner for the giveaway. Uh, for those of you who do not remember, we are giving away one of the Carry Commission Hobays, the full-sized Hobay. I'm donating to this giveaway my personal Herman Slim 
from Polish Custom Knives. We are giving away a carry commission bum bag and then one of the custom carry commission pens, which I have right here. That is the Topo Mini Click EDC. So what I have to do is go through and select winners from April 1st. It was supposed to be April 1st through the end of April. I got sick last week, so we're gonna run the, the entries through today, right now, and then I'm gonna add in anybody who had a second entry who was featured in one of the two videos that I did. And then we're gonna go through a random name picker. And the winner is Manish. Manish, I only have a first name, Manish, or Manish Mail on Instagram. Congratulations, I will reach out. If I don't hear from Manish within 48 hours, then I will have to re-roll and choose another winner. But for now, and until I hear otherwise, or don't hear otherwise, congratulations, Manish. And thank you all for submitting. Please continue to do so. I'm gonna keep making these. I don't know when the next giveaway will be or what will be in it, but we're gonna keep trying to make them as easy as this rather than you know a long one year plus delayed giveaway. Uh, that got just way too big and out of hand. This is way easier to put together. So continue, just go to edcw.co, submit your carry there. There's no theme for the next one yet because I just don't know when it's gonna be. I've got several things kind of piling up because I missed some deadlines when I was sick and there's just a little bit of chaos. And then by the time I get all that done, we're at Blade Show. So who knows when the next EDC Weekly will be. Um, I'm trying, but it's there's a lot of other stuff that has to take precedence right now. But that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Everything you saw in this video will be linked down below. I encourage you to go check out those makers as well. Um, but that's it. Thank you guys again. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, carry on.